Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah, and in this tutorial video, we're going to dive headfirst yet again into the world of 2D game animation. Today, we're going to learn how to make cool animations for a platformer player character. We'll take a look at how to make appealing and fun run animations, idle animations, and how to make a really cool jump. We'll also take a look at how to make transitions between these various animations with the animator and some simple C sharp code. Of course, tons of what will be shown and said in this video can be applied to any type of game and any kind of character. Now, just before starting, I recommend you first check out this video I made on the basics of game animation in Unity. There I show you how to draw animation-ready characters, rig them, as well as how to use Unity's animation timeline to bring your characters to life. If you know all this though, or have already watched that video, then let's jump right in. So I made a simple humanoid player character. He's made up of a head, body, shield, sword arm, and two legs. I parented all his body parts to a root game object called player, so that when I move, rotate or scale that object, all the body parts move, scale and rotate with it. Attached to this player object is a 2D box collider, rigid body and platformer controller c -sharp script. This enables the player to be moved around the world and jump on platforms. If you want to learn how to do this, just check out my video on the topic. However, as you can see, there's no animations. As a result, the player looks very boring. So without further ado, let's make an idle animation. This is the animation game characters play when standing still. Because obviously, even when characters stand still, they should still be moving a little bit. Such as have their chest rise and fall to look like they're breathing. Or have bits of clothing move slightly in the wind. Or have them blink once or twice. This will make the character seem alive and not like some dead robot. So I'll open up the animation timeline by heading over to Window, Animation and Animation again. Then I'll select the player root object and choose Create New Animation. There I'll save my idle animation inside a folder called Warrior Player. So first of all I'll set keyframes for the body. And then move the last keyframes to about frame 20 to make the idle loop a bit faster than 60 whole frames, so 1 second. Then at about frame 10 I'll move the body of the character up a bit, and hitting play you'll see that the character already looks more interesting, like he's breathing. Of course it still looks very stiff, so let's add some overlapping action to this animation by adding position keyframes to the head. And then at frame 5 I'll move the head down a bit, and at 15 I'll move it up. And you can see that things look much smoother in action already. Now of course it's very important that in this sort of animation things loop. In other words, the start and end of the animation must see the character with the same position, rotation and scale. If not, there will be some ugly snapping. To make sure that the animation is indeed the same at the start and end, simply select the first keyframes, hit Ctrl C on your keyboard to copy those, and paste them with Ctrl V at the end of your animation. Awesome! Next up I'll select the sword and shield and rotate them slightly at the middle of the animation to create some more movement. It's often a good idea to move each body part ever so slightly in an animation. This makes it feel more alive and believable. It's just more interesting than something static. And to finalize this idle animation, let's add some squash and stretch. So I'll squash the head a bit at frame 5 and stretch it just a tad at frame 15. The more squash and stretch you add, the softer and more cartoony the animation will appear. So yeah, don't add too much if you want your game to look realistic and serious. And that's about it, we have an idle animation. Now let's move on to the run animation. The player will be seeing a lot of this one. Well, whenever he moves left or right actually. So I'll create the first pose, this one featuring the character with his legs stretched apart in full swing. I'll also rotate the weapon up a bit. Now I'll copy these first keyframes and paste them at the end of the animation. I think I'll make it last no more than 20 frames. I want this animation to be fast and dynamic after all. And of course, don't worry, you can always change pretty easily the speed of your animation later on. Anyway, I'll now go to frame 10 and rotate my legs in the opposite direction. 
This way they appear to move back and forth like in a real run. I'll also rotate my sword down just a bit. I don't want them swinging it like crazy in this case. Same thing for the shield. Now, the animation still looks really bad. This is because we need to create the down and up poses. Basically, in a run, there's a few key poses the character goes through. The contact poses, which are the ones we just created. Then there's the down pose. This is when the character puts his weight on one leg and squashes down a bit, just to leap in the air after that with the up pose. During the up pose, the character is usually a bit higher and more stretched than during the contact pose. So with that said, I'll grab the character's body and move it down at about frame three, and then move it up at seven. Don't exaggerate this too much or you'll get a weird jittery up and down motion. And I'll copy these keys and paste them here. And now you'll see that the run animation already looks a lot better. At this point, you can add some squash and stretch to the character. For example, I'll squash the head just a bit during the down poses and stretch it a little for the up poses. And so here's my final result. Of course, this is a simple cartoony character and creating a run animation for a more complex or realistic character will take more time and require slightly more poses, but hopefully you've understood the basics. Now, chances are high you're not too satisfied with the speed of the animation. Just remember you can drag a marquee over all your keyframes to select them, and then left click on this blue bar to squash your keys together or pull them apart. Squashing them will speed up the animation and pulling them apart will slow it down. So yeah, for a character moving at this speed, I think a run that goes like this is cool. But of course, I'll probably need to adjust this a bit once the animations are tied in with what the player is doing in-game. Next up, we need to make a jump. So I'll create a new animation called Jump. Now, the actual C-sharp code handles the player character moving up and then falling back down. So we don't want to animate the player moving up and down with this animation. That will just interfere with the code and make for some very weird jumps. Instead, we just want to get the player in a jump pose, so legs apart and body leaning slightly backwards. And to make the jump a bit more interesting and less static, I'll gradually get those legs moving apart even more for a duration of one second, as well as get the body leaning back even more. And that's it. This will look great in action, and don't worry, you can always come back later and tweak your animation once you see how it fits in with the player controller. For now though, we only have two animations left to make, a takeoff and landing animation. We'll play the takeoff animation just before the jump. This is just one pose that sees our character stretched out, basically leaping into the air. This will make for a really nice cartoony stretch as the character leaves the ground for his jump and then I'll make an animation called land, and here I'll just get the character squashing slightly and then bouncing back up a bit. So when the character lands back on the ground after his jump, he'll squash a bit, making the jump feel more impactful, giving the character more weight, and just all in all making everything look cooler. So there we go, we have five animations. Now we need to jump inside of the animator window and set up all the transitions between these animations. And then we'll need to type some C-sharp code inside our player controller to get these animations playing at the right time. But first I'll head over to my warrior player animation folder and make sure to uncheck the loop time box for the takeoff, land and jump animations. This is because I don't want these three animations playing over and over again. I just want them playing once when I tell them to. I'll leave the loop time box checks for the idle and run animations though, so that they keep playing as long as the character is running or standing still. Now, if you've never touched the animator window and know nothing about animation transitions, then I highly recommend you check out my beginner tutorial on the topic. With that said, I'll make a bool parameter called is running. We'll use this to get our character transitioning from his idle to his run animation, and vice versa. So I'll right click on the idle animation and choose make transition, and I'll connect the idle animation with the run animation. Now I'll left click on that arrow to select the transition and add a parameter down here. 
So only if is running is equal to true, do I want to go from the idle animation to the run animation. I'll uncheck exit time and make this transition last no more than 0.1 seconds. I want the character to go from his idle to his run animation fast, so things feel fun and responsive. And now I'll make a transition going from the run to the idle animation. This one will only work if is running is equal to false. And again, uncheck exit time and make the transition last 0.1 seconds. Now the only way we can set whether is running is equal to true or false is via code. So I'll double click on my player controller script to open it up inside of Visual Studio. First of all, we need to grab a reference to the animator component attached to the player character. So I'll make a private variable of type animator called anim and set that equal to the animator component attached to the player in the start function. With that done, I'll be able to set is running equal to true or false. So I'm going to check down here whether move input is equal to zero. If it is, then that means my character isn't moving. So I'll type anim.setbool is running false. And so now the character will play his idle animation since he isn't moving left or right. However, if move input isn't equal to zero, then that means he is moving, in which case we'll set is running equal to true so that the character plays his run animation. I'll save my script and test this out inside of Unity. And indeed, the character plays his idle animation when standing still and runs when he moves left or right. And so at this point, you can adjust either animation if need be. So for example, if the run feels too slow compared to the speed with which the character moves left or right, you can simply squash the keys together to make it a bit faster. All right, we're making great progress here. Next up, we need to set up this jump animation. So I'll head back to the animator window and create a transition going from this any state box to the takeoff animation box. And we'll only transition to this takeoff animation if a parameter is triggered. So I'll create a new parameter, this one of type trigger, called takeoff. And now I'll select my transition arrow and add a new parameter, this takeoff one. And I'll make this transition last no more than 0.1 seconds again. So to recap, as soon as this takeoff parameter is triggered, then the character will go from any state, so his idle or run state, and transition to the takeoff animation state. But of course, we don't want him staying in this takeoff state forever. We want the player to quickly transition to his jump animation. So I'll make a new transition going from the takeoff animation to the jump animation. But before doing that, we want to make sure the character is indeed jumping. So I'll make a last bool parameter called is jumping and add a parameter here checking whether is jumping is equal to true. I'll uncheck exit time here too and get this transition lasting 0.15 seconds. And so as soon as the jump is finished, I'll get the player transitioning to the land animation. We know that the jump is complete and that the character is back on firm ground as soon as the is jumping parameter is equal to false. And again, I'll uncheck exit time and set transition duration to 0.05. I just want to make this extra fast and impactful. And lastly, I'll go from the land animation to the idle animation if is running is equal to false, or from land to run if is running is equal to true. This time I'll leave exit time checked and set to 1 for both transitions, because I want the whole land animation to play before transitioning to the run or idle animations. And then for transition duration, I'll type in 0.1 seconds. Awesome. That should work really nicely. We just need to set a few things up via code now. So as soon as the player hits the jump key, which in my case is Z, that'll trigger the takeoff parameter. This way he goes from whatever state he's currently at to that takeoff animation. Then if he's not on the ground, that'll set is jumping equal to true, so that he transitions from the takeoff animation to the jump animation. However, if he's on the ground, then I'll set is jumping equal to false. This way he'll play the land animation, and from there, go back to run or idle. And that's it, I'll save the script and test things out. And things look awesome. The character is fully animated and feels a lot more alive than he did when we just started. Now again, things might not look or feel that good for you at this point. If that's the case, then continue tweaking your animations and animation transition values. For example, if the character seems to take a long time to go from his idle to his run animation, then perhaps decrease the transition duration value of that transition. Or if the land animation doesn't feel exaggerated enough, 
Try squashing the character a bit more. It's all about practice and patience. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this game animation video. I hope you learned a thing or two and enjoy the process. If you need help or want to ask me a question, post away in the comment section down below and I'll try answering to the best of my ability. As you may know by now, the Blackthorn Prod Game Jam is currently running with over a thousand participants. I myself have been making a game for the jam and look forward to sharing it with you when the event ends this Saturday. You can of course also expect a making of video about the creation process I went through to bring this game to life soon enough. And once that's done, I'll get back to work on my puzzle platformer game. So yeah, stay tuned guys. Oh, and just before leaving, note that you can support me and my channel financially via Patreon like these epic people. It's a really big help and even a dollar every month is so appreciated and encouraging. Just hitting the like and subscribe buttons is also really awesome. Okay, see you soon. Cheers.